Now, you'd think after part 13 of this series, we'd be running low on accounts of people who embarrassingly removed themselves from the gene pool. And yet, unbelievably, here I am again with even more stories of idiots that ended themselves in the dumbest ways possible. From attempting to French kiss a rattlesnake to laughing in the face of gun safety, here's part 14 of our never-ending Darwin Awards. Butt of the joke. I don't often get to pick favorites, but as far as dumb decisions go, this is probably the funniest dumb decision I've ever heard of. Back in 2009 in Pennsylvania, USA, a 17-year-old boy was rushed to A&E after claiming bullies had planted an explosive in his backpack. Obviously, the police were called, but the injuries he sustained didn't match his story. It was only then that the teen revealed what had actually happened. He'd gone rifling through his grandmother's possessions and found an M80 explosive, an American class of very large firecracker containing some 80 grams of flash powder. They were often used by the US military to simulate grenade explosions, but they were banned for sale in 1966 by the Child Protection Act. And we're about to find out why. This idiot had taken the firecracker up to his room and, in a stunningly stupid move, began to repeatedly light and extinguish the fuse. However, during one of these insane cycles, he lit it up and couldn't put it out. Instead of throwing the explosive out of a window or as far away as possible, he instead jammed the thing between his thighs and put his hands over it to muffle the sound of the explosion. Big mistake. The resulting blast cost him his right hand, right leg, and most of his junk. Meaning while he survived, he lost the ability to reproduce and thus removed any future DNA of his from the gene pool. Ha, <laughs> I think I just saw Darwin give this story a thumbs up from his grave. Up in flames. There are some jobs that are obviously a little more dangerous than others. And back in 1819, no one had a riskier or more fantastical job than Sophie Blanchard. Also known as Madame Blanchard, she was a French aeronaut and was the first woman to work as a professional balloonist. She would ascend in a chair attached to hydrogen balloons to entertain huge crowds of people below her. Well, this was a time before the internet. I guess the French had very limited entertainment options. Sophie would regularly perform in the Tivoli Gardens, sometimes using pyrotechnics called blue light or bingo fire to really spice up her high-flying act. The only problem is that hydrogen is incredibly flammable, and people knew this, regularly warning Sophie about the danger of using pyrotechnics in her shows. But Sophie would not be deterred. And so, on the 6th of July, 1819, a particularly gusty day, Sophie ascended. She struck up her fiery display and waved down to the crowds when, all of a sudden, her balloon caught a light. The fire spread quickly, Hindenburg style, and she began to descend rapidly. She seemed calm, but then the wind caught her draft, blowing it out of the gardens and into the side of several nearby buildings, which is when she fell, fatally. Not exactly the blaze of glory she was aiming for, I bet. Can it? It's not often that you guys send me your own stories for this series, but one Be Amazed viewer called Collie Carney got in touch with a tale that definitely deserves a Darwin Award of its own. Back in 2015, Collie's neighbor was bored. So bored that the only thing they could think of to alleviate their boredom was to grab their trash can, lay it down on the road, and hop inside it. They then used it to sled down the street like the world's worst toboggan. However, unlike a toboggan track, a road has cars, which Collie's neighbor quickly discovered. Their trash can soon collided with an oncoming car and was yeeted into the side of someone's house. They didn't survive, but they did prove that sometimes the trash takes itself out. Do you have any Darwin Award-winning stories of your own? Let me know down below, or if it's a bit lengthy, send me a message at stories at beamazed.com. Who knows, you might make it into the inevitable next part of this series. Bearing All I live my life by a few very simple rules and one of those is not to make any big decisions after I've had a few drinks. This is a lesson that a Serbian gentleman could have benefited from back in 2007. One evening during the Belgrade Beer Festival, this guy, who was assumed to be absolutely wasted, proceeded to head over to the Belgrade Zoo, broke in, stripped down until he was butt naked, and then climbed into the bear enclosure. Okay, I can understand being drunk enough to text your ex or drunk enough to order $100 of fast food, but this... This is another level of drunk, and one that didn't last long. The bears, Masha and Misha, wasted no time making a meal of the idiot, and it was only in the morning that the zookeepers discovered him, half-eaten and wholly dead. 
They figured that he must have been under the influence because, in their words, only an idiot would walk into the bear enclosure. Well, stuff can be two things. What's to say this guy wasn't drunk and an idiot? Good boy. Back in 2002, on the 29th of July, a TV channel in Ukraine reported on a story from the suburbs of Luhansk that nobody watching could believe. Late that evening, a deputy of the local administration board had been out walking his dog when he encountered a young police cadet. The cadet was escorting two women home in the dark and noticed the dog wasn't on a lead or wearing a muzzle. So doing his duty, the cadet informed the deputy that what he was doing was illegal. The deputy, having been upstaged so publicly, began to argue with the cadet. Things were getting tense, but the situation really escalated when the deputy suddenly revealed he had an RGD-5 grenade, pulled the pen, and hurled it at the cadet. Very rational response there. But because his dog wasn't on a lead or wearing a muzzle, the deputy's faithful four-legged friend ran to retrieve the grenade like a ball and brought it right back to him. The master and dog, sadly, both met an explosive fate. Man, that's rough. Hot shot. There aren't enough considerate car thieves in this world, if you ask me, unlike our next Darwin Award winner. Rather than just stealing cars and abandoning them when they were reported stolen, one car thief in Pittsburgh would also set fire to them, reasoning that this helped the owners claim insurance. But this horrendous habit would eventually become his own downfall. Back in 1998, our carcinist and a few friends decided to steal an old van that wasn't in the best of shape. Soon after, it was reported stolen to the police, so as usual, he planned to set the vehicle ablaze by lighting a fire in the passenger seat. However, he didn't know that the door handle on the driver's side of the cab was broken, so when he tried to get out, he quickly discovered he was trapped. His friends tried to get him out, but the door was locked and the fire quickly burned out of control. Police found him the next day. Apparently, he was carred to a crisp. Sorry, charred to a crisp. Idiot Confinement we all know at least one person who just cannot live without attention. Aside from being impossible to satisfy, they often don't know when to stop, much like this next award winner. Back in 2015, a Croatian criminal who'd been jailed for repeatedly threatening his ex-girlfriend was put in the prison solitary confinement section for bad behavior. Not a fan of his new padded pad, he decided to force the guards to pay attention to him by pulling out a lighter he'd smuggled in and setting fire to the cushion pads lining the walls, ceiling, and floors. He expected the guards to come back to get him out immediately, but 20 seconds later, no one was coming. 40 seconds later, he was still on his own, and the fire was growing. After a minute, he began to panic as the room was starting to fill with smoke and flames. All too late, he realized he'd set fire to a room that was completely flammable, and the guards simply wouldn't notice in time. Well, that's one way to serve a life sentence. Man vs. Tree Back in 2004, police were called to the scene of an accident around the back of a house in Georgia, USA that left them, in a word, stumped. A large tree had toppled on top of a truck, both of which were charred and smoldering. Inside the truck was a body burned beyond recognition, but the entire scene didn't make any sense. The tree had fallen onto the truck instead of away from it, which is what they would have expected if the two had collided. But why would they have collided behind a house? And what had started the fire? Slowly but surely, the puzzle pieces came together. It appeared that the gentleman behind the wheel of the truck had been attempting to remove the tree from the yard by tying the truck to the tree and flooring it. He'd assumed the tree would use some sort of cartoon physics and fall away from the truck, but because we live in reality, the tree fell in the direction of the applied force and landed on top of the truck, crushing the driver. The engine overheated, setting both the truck and tree ablaze, and the rest is Darwin Award-winning history. Getting shredded. Hiring a tree surgeon to trim back or cut down your trees can be expensive, but doing the work yourself can end up costing even more, as one man found out back in 2008. Instead of paying a professional, he'd hired an industrial tree shredder and placed it at the base of an old oak tree in his yard, which had recently been struck by lightning. He was planning on cutting away the dead section of the tree himself by climbing up and trimming it away, dropping any stray branches down into the hopper beneath him. Only thing was, he hadn't used harnesses, safety equipment, or, well, anything to secure himself to the tree. So entirely unsecured, he clambered up the ladder, stepped out onto a branch, and began cutting away when suddenly he lost his footing and fell straight into the shredder. Yikes. Well, on the plus side, I bet he made for a very moist mulch. Claymore Cretans. Cambodia has seen its share of violence and explosions following the historic and horrendous Cambodian-Vietnamese War. 
But in 1999, 10 years after the war ended, an explosion in a cafe in Sveiring province caught the attention of the tabloids. According to witnesses, three regular frenemies were drinking heavily at a cafe and exchanging insults with one another when one of them, clearly disgruntled, suddenly pulled out a Claymore landmine and threw it under the table. He drunkenly explained he'd found it in his backyard and wanted the men to play the ultimate game of Russian roulette with it. While the other, much smarter patrons were fleeing, these three intoxicated idiots took turns stamping on the pressure-triggered explosive in an attempt to set it off. Several minutes and stamps later, the bomb detonated, taking all three men with it. While they say you can take out two birds with one stone, or in this case, three idiots with one landmine. Leveled Crossing April 15th is a pretty important day in the U.S. calendar. Why? Because that's the most common day of the U.S. tax filing deadline. But back in 2001, this fell on a Sunday, meaning there were limited post office hours available to send off any last-minute tax documents before the IRS came knocking. This was something a man from Tennessee desperately wanted to avoid, and so he was in his car racing to the post office in the hopes of submitting his taxes on time. But as he was driving, he noticed a slow-moving train heading for a crossing which would have blocked his route for several minutes at least. In an attempt to avoid this, he floored it and sped over the crossing just before the train reached it. But as he did so, crash! Another car racing from the other direction was also trying to beat the train, and the two collided. One driver perished and the other was wounded, but by some cosmic miracle, the crash occurred just to the side of the tracks, so the train passed by unimpeded, and no passengers were injured. Well, I guess these idiots proved that trying to beat an active train crossing is taxing, to say the least. Getting Airtime if you've ever been to Holiday World and Splash and Safari in Indiana, USA, then you probably know the Raven. This big old bird-themed wooden roller coaster has a peak height of 110 feet and a top speed of 50 miles per hour. Not exactly the tallest or fastest coaster out there, but still super fun nonetheless. However, back in 2003, one woman made a supremely dumb decision in a bid to really get her adrenaline pumping. Riding the Raven with her fiancé, the pair of roller coaster enthusiasts had their lap bar and seatbelts checked by staff before the coaster set off. But a few moments later, she undid her seatbelt, tucked the two sides into the cushions of her seat, and wriggled out of the lap bar. She wanted to stand up as the coaster went down the drops in a bid to catch what roller coaster enthusiasts refer to as airtime. But during the fifth drop, which was some 69 feet high, she lost her footing and was sent tumbling over the edge to her demise. Gee, it's almost like the safety restraints were there for a reason. Dog Days In my opinion, people who hurt animals on purpose belong in a special circle of hell. And as it would happen, this next story, while involving a dog who was likely abused by its owner, ends humiliatingly for said owner. That means I get to immortalize him here for the entire world to laugh at. So let's rewind to 2008 and head over to upstate New York. Here, a 50-year-old man was bird hunting alongside a few of his buddies, with his faithful canine companion at his side. Suddenly, the dog found a deer leg bone and began chewing on it. The owner tried to take it away, but the dog refused to give up its bone. Frustrated, the hunter began to wield his shotgun like a club, swinging the butt of it at the dog. Each time he did, the dog dodged. That was until this idiot slammed the butt of the shotgun into the ground. The shock triggered the gun to fire, with the muzzle pointed directly at his stomach. The huntsman was airlifted to the hospital, but didn't make it, though he did live just long enough to confirm this account to the police. Well, what can I say? At least the dog got to keep its bone. Midnight Mess North Carolina is an American state that allows a lot of different types of gun ownership. And while most people are careful with the way they use, handle, and store their guns, that can't be said for everyone. Back in December 1992, during the very early hours, a man in the town of Newton was woken by the sound of the landline telephone ringing next to his bed. Sleepily, in the darkness, he grabbed the phone and put it to his ear. Only it wasn't the phone he grabbed, but the handgun he'd left on his bedside table. For some reason, this incredibly sloppy gun owner had left his handgun there with the safety off, and when he brought it up to his ear, accidentally pushing the trigger down in the process, boom. So for any gun owners watching, don't leave your firearms lying around with the safety off. Unless you, too, want your gun to double up as the world's worst alarm clock. Honorable Mention, French Hiss. Now, it wouldn't be a Darwin Award video without at least one insane story heralding from the state of Florida. We've covered plenty of crazy stories from this state before, but this next one might just be the weirdest yet. 
Back in 2017, a man from Putnam County discovered a rattlesnake on his property. So he did the responsible thing and put it in a tank with the intent to release it somewhere far away the following day. Surprisingly responsible for a Florida man story, right? Well, in the meantime, he told his neighbors what he'd found who had a less responsible reaction. They immediately decided to play with the wild snake before one of them said he was going to kiss it on the mouth. I'm not sure what he thought was going to happen, but as he puckered up for a big open mouth snaky smooch, the rattlesnake did what you'd expect it to. It bit him on the tongue. Now, rattlesnake venom is nasty, and in the right doses, it can cause numbness, swelling, nausea, difficulty breathing, and even death. And so, as this guy's tongue and throat started to swell up, he was rushed to the hospital and put in a protective coma state for a few days. Miraculously, he survived. So sadly, no Darwin Award today. But with any luck, this taught our resident idiot a thing or two about not forcing himself on deadly animals. Consent is key, my dude. High life. Helium can be hilarious. Because the gas is six times less dense than air, sound waves travel through it much quicker. So if you inhale it, your voice sounds much higher. I could listen to this forever. But helium shouldn't be inhaled for too long because even though it's a gas, you still need oxygen to breathe, which is a very basic science lesson that these two next award winners apparently missed out on. Back in 2006 in Tampa Bay, Florida, two 21-year-old spotted a huge promotional balloon eight foot in diameter used to advertise condominiums for Lakeview at Calusa Trace. It was late and quiet, and so they decided to pull the huge balloon down and get inside it for maximum high-voiced humor. They cut it open and shoved their top halves inside as the balloon gradually deflated, enjoying the squeaky high notes. But it didn't last long. You see, when our lungs are filled with helium, it means we're not filling them with oxygen, which our organs rely on. Depending on how much helium is inhaled, a person can lose consciousness quickly and die from lack of oxygen, also known as asphyxiation, which is exactly what happened. Dizzy and confused, these two idiots lost consciousness and were only found the next morning when a local sheriff spotted the bottom halves of their bodies sticking out from the deflated balloon. Well, at least they ended on a high. A burning problem. Now, I really respect volunteer firefighters. It's a pretty thankless job that requires an immense amount of bravery. But being brave and being stupid aren't mutually exclusive terms, as the Sequoia Volunteer Fire Department in Tennessee proved back in 1999. This supreme team of seven idiots were bored having not received a call for help in over two months. And so they started up a dangerous habit of using gasoline to light fires in vacant houses in a rural part of Chattanooga. They'd then rush in, put out the blaze, and pretend to be heroes. But this incredibly dangerous ruse all fell apart one day when one of them, who was spreading gasoline in the attic, didn't realize the others had already started the blaze. The fire spread so quickly it trapped the wannabe hero in the attic where he met his demise. When the real firefighters and police were called in, they realized all too quickly what had been happening. The six accomplices faced a combined total of 60 years in prison. Man, I don't think there's enough water on earth to cool that burn. Love in the cockpit. Let's fly back in time to 1991 Florida, where two pilots of a small Piper Seneca aircraft decided to undertake a simulated instrument flight. This is where a literal hood is placed over the eyes of the pilot and they fly using only the instrument on the dashboard. It's a fairly standard practice. However, on this day, witnesses noticed that while in the air, the aircraft's right wing suddenly failed before it dived down and crashed. Neither pilot survived. People began to wonder what could have caused such a tragic accident. Had both pilots been wearing a hood? Was the plane defective? Was it on purpose? Well, on closer inspection of the crash, a few things became clear. The front right seat was in a fully reclined position, neither pilot was wearing their seat belt, and both were only partially clothed. Further examination revealed no rips or tears to any zippers or buttons, so it appeared that the pilots had removed their clothes themselves, used the fully reclined seat as a bed, and er, tried to join the Mile High Club, if you get my drift. But with no one, you know, flying the plane, it began to move erratically, leading to the wing failure and eventual crash. I guess you could say they were victims of the ultimate high. Gunning for a fight. Okay, I want you to imagine you were planning a robbery. I imagine there'd be a few essential things you'd try and take into account before picking a target, right? Things like what valuables will they have? Will there be many people around or will they be well armed? 
Alternatively, you can contemplate none of these things and just wing it, like our next Darwin Award winner did. Back in 1990, our would-be criminal made the big brain decision to target a gun store located near Seattle, Washington. Did he do this early in the morning or late at night when it'd be a little quieter? No, he went for 4.40 in the afternoon when the store was super crowded. He waltzed in, fired a few wild shots into the air, and announced to everyone in no uncertain terms that he was robbing the joint. Now, being a gun store, this place attracted a certain type of patron. You know, the type that really likes guns. And it was only after he'd fired off his shots that he noticed a uniformed policeman having coffee with the store owner. Yep, our criminal had also managed to miss the police car parked outside the store. All of a sudden, several people being held up pulled out their own firearms and let loose on the robber, including the policeman. After taking a barrage of bullets, he was put down, and amazingly, no one else in the store was injured. Considering just how dumb this guy was, I'm amazed he was holding the gun the right way around. Which of these endings did you think was the most idiotic? And do you have any Darwin Award winning stories of your own? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.